Here's some thoughts on current events that I wrote down. We can look at the reaction of both the left and the right in relation to the existential anxieties generated by the coronavirus, particularly the level of denial of its dangers, for example, disregarding social distancing, on behalf of their respective belief systems. The right, on behalf of the pro-business continuation of pre-coronavirus arrangements and activities, the reopening of America. The left, on behalf of the pursuit of certain social justice goals, the recent protests. Whether it's advocating for people getting back to work and enjoying pre-virus entertainment, or protesters on the streets advocating for an end to police brutality, people display a certain willingness to risk contagion for the sake of their cultural values, particularly after a long period of personal suppression and quarantine. The busyness, cultural identity, and entertainment of pre-coronavirus times have generally been undermined coupled with the unemployment, the economic pain, or sometimes greed, felt by many, the already precarious state of self-esteem caused by existing social arrangements, and the death anxiety generated by the virus itself, we have the need to reassert our basic beliefs and identities, our main anxiety buffers which are, of course, tied to our instinctive morality, expressed through the lens of our conflicting worldviews. Some indications of this reassertion began to make themselves apparent a few weeks ago, as more people began to disregard mask use and social distancing rules. There was an initial effort to fetishize the coronavirus as the only source of death and evil in the world. But in contrast with the remarkably sustained efforts and sacrifices humans have displayed against evils embodied by other groups of humans, the coronavirus is an impersonal enemy, which for most people does not generate the same level of outrage or the same sense of heroic struggle and victory when fought or overcome. An exception are, of course, the professions that keep our great society going, like the medical profession, which has widely been described as heroic, as I actually predicted months ago, utilizing Ernest Becker's terminology of heroism. But the other newly created heroism I described back then, uh, the heroic solidarity required to overcome the virus, could not be sustained at its initial levels, and so partially morphed into a different solidarity directed at remedying a less impersonal evil, systemic police brutality which created the perfect spark for ignition with the gruesome murder of George Floyd. A therapeutic new sense of meaning and purpose in opposition to an undeniable social ill. Much of the right, too, could join in the drama by focusing on the perceived negative aspects of the protests, expressing outrage at the lack of respect for the forces of law and order, which they identify with, and vehemently demanded be restored with increased state force and violence. Now, according to recent polls, uh, the majority of the American public, I think sensibly, supports the protests far more than the so-called reopening of America, advocated by Trump. But, in evaluating the rationality of our anxiety-buffering belief systems and uh, corresponding actions, we have to see to what extent they realistically relate to addressing actual death threats, as well as to the human need for basic dignity. 
I say realistically because there are threats we will never address, including our biggest ones. Environmental destruction and global warming. If the global footprint network is correct, and humans require a meager per capita footprint of 1.6 GHA, global hectares per capita, to achieve minimal levels of sustainability, a standard only achieved by poor third world countries, then the human species would require the universal adoption of a modest lifestyle with few non-essential goods available. This would entail a great restriction of our sense of purpose and of our heroic strivings. Not, not only will this never happen voluntarily, but there is actually a lack of willingness to adopt environmental policies that could even delay the possible extinction of humanity and many other species in the not so distant future. Thus, it is only in the relative short term that we can address the threats to life and human dignity that we face. And since the actions countering these threats are often motivated by the need for heroic struggle and victory, and a hopeful, if not wishful, belief in long-lasting change and legacy, they will tend to involve some level of denial of human limitations, some level of fetishized distortion and delusion that will counter our attempts at a purely realistic appraisal of evil. Just as the actions following our realistic appraisal of police brutality required a certain denial of coronavirus dangers.